Andrews. The but problem, we... I'm in the office, okay? So I see it better <laughs> on the screen of my computer, but I hear it better uh, from, you can see me from my phone, but you can hear me only from my office computer. That's why I have both. All good, recording started, guys. Okay, are you ready to hear me? We're ready. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Women Learning Group of the Spanish and Portuguese Synagogue of Montreal. Today is May 17, 2023, 26 AR 5783. By the way, it is Yom Yerushalayim. There is a big demonstration now with a lot of security in Jerusalem. My name is Gladys Perez Moalem, coordinator of the Women Learning Group program created by Rabbi Shahar Ornstein 14 years ago. Following our celebration of Ladies Bat Mitzvah on July 5, 2009. We are honored today to enjoy on Zoom the art of Ikebana, Japanese flower arrangement with master instructor, Loris Dalal invited by her niece, our friend Sandra Kuku, for our delight and enjoyment. Next week, our speaker will be dermatologist, Dr. Alfred Bilbour on healthy hair and healthy nails, followed by our lawyer friend, Alan Morad, on the necessity of having a will followed by Israeli dance by our beloved instructor, Maurice Perez. Ending with our wonderful cantor reverend, Daniel Ben Lolo, with his beautiful voice, celebrating the final of series 28. Exceptionally nine sessions instead of six. Please continue to join us every Wednesday, same Zoom details and same hours at 10 o'clock. I am inviting Sandra Kuku to read the biography of her auntie, Loris Dalal. Sandra Kuku, Bevakasha, Bechabot. Thank you so much, Gladys, for this beautiful program that you've been conducting for close to almost now 15 years. And you bring us all together, it's precious. Um, I wanna thank my aunt who accepted, she was so nervous. I've never done this online, it was always in person. I told her, auntie, whatever you do turns out perfect. <laughs> One thing I learned from you, and don't take this lightly, I remember it. We were in a car, I was like 10, and we were driving downtown from our homes up in uh, the suburbs of Tehran. And you said one thing that stayed with me. You said, when there's a will, there's a way. So my will was to bring you here, even after, even through your fear of online, <laughs> and it worked. So just one thing, the only bio I have for Auntie Loris is she would take us on walks along the beach. When we went to the Caspian Sea, we were like five families. And all the kids would follow her in a long trail on the beach. And she would give each one of us something to bring back, a piece of driftwood, like you see right behind her, or a piece of moss or a flower, some rocks. And we all came back bearing gifts. And then she would put it together in a beautiful arrangement. 
And this is how we grew up with, um, and also she would take us to the Rudaki Hall to listen to, to see ballets and concerts. We'd look up in the box, the king and queen were sitting there. It was Auntie Loris who introduced us to art and culture and music. Uh, she has been traveling all over the world with his fa her family. She's taken them on safaris to Africa to, and that's where her son Henry got his love of horses and nature. And so here's to you, Auntie Loris. So Ksenia, you can start the presentation. And Auntie Loris, can you start by saying something about how you started with Ikebana? Okay, thank you, Sandra. Auntie Loris, Bebakasha, Bechabod. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra, for really inviting me. And thank you, introduce me to personality of beautiful friends. And thank you for all the compliments. I feel honored. Okay, briefly, I started my love of Ikebana was the love of nature. And the I find beauty in, uh, in the weirdest things and always arranged, as she said, but it wasn't Ikebana, just arrangement. So back in Iran, there was our chapter founder of Ikebana International. And I had some friends, I said, why don't you come for lunch for, uh, for a meeting? It's nice, you love flowers, come and see. So I did go and that's how I enjoy, how I, I joined the Ikebana chapter in Iran. Uh, so from then on, then I, I, I got lessons from the Japanese ambassador. She was there, she was taking, and I said, well, that's interesting. So they're on and on. And I said, wherever you travel, there will be a chapter, look for it. There will be chapter and joy which I did. So here we are in Naples. And I've, I've started that from uh, about 70s, in the late 70s, learning. And I didn't know what school it was and what it was all about. So when then I started getting certificates, then I knew what it was. And then since then, I've joined convention. I'm still learning. I've got uh, quite a few certificates. They're all uh, signed from Japan, the headquarters. So I'm not gonna talk too much and that's it. So we'll see, this is the result. So where do we start? Okay. And I had this picture that Henry sent. That was our, our uh, exhibition two years ago. We have our exhibition. We have a chapter here, number 60, Ikebana. And uh, um, we have members over 80 people. And we give the exhibition at the Botanical Garden every year in February. If you happen to be in Naples, warming from uh, uh, Montreal, please come and see and the exhibit. There are different, uh, different exhibitors, teachers, students, with their teachers, and so on. So this was the head of it. Okay. So you like to read, so get. Okay, um, can we have somebody to volunteer to start reading? Uh, each one will do one paragraph. Gigi, would you like to start? They are all uh, muted. Okay, I'll read. I've asked Gigi to unmute. Gigi, oh, okay. you unmute yourself. Gigi, you are muted. You have to unmute yourself. My arrow was going everywhere, so. Okay, so Getsu Ikebana is for everyone everywhere. It is the art of flower arrangement rooted in tradition, but ever changing. You read so beautifully, continue. Okay, the Japanese characters of the Sogetsu school, uh, otherwise known as RYU, represents grass, moon, and stream. Oh, represent grass, moon, and stream. Grass grows everywhere, 
I, I, the, you have, I have pictures on uh, the screen. I don't know how to get rid of it. So I can't move, read move the them. end of the line. Move them. Okay. I, I'll just read. Grass grows everywhere. The moon is seen by everyone. A stream is always moving. The art form is a product of skill and creativity using flower branches and other conventional or unconventional matter in order to express the beauty and harmony of nature and one's imagination and create and the imagination and creativity of the designer. Yeah, either conventional or unconventional. Continue. Not merely arranging a cabana. Um, not merely flower arranging. Yeah, I can't see it. Okay, I'll not, do it. Yes. Not merely flower arranging. Ikebana is an art to portray the life of the universe. Brought to Japan by Buddhist priests from China in the sixth century, written records exist from the 15th century. The designs are based on the structural triad. The tallest line symbolizes heaven. The secondary line is man, and the tertiary line is earth. The triad actually reflects the teachings of Confucius. Heaven as the soul of all elements of life, man, the fundamental way by which all things become active and earth, the way in which all things take form. Though it looks simple, Ikebana is not easy, just as life is not easy. As with any art form, styles and tastes change throughout time. A style that may have been popular 10 years ago may now be considered dated looking. This is true of Ikebana as well, but the underlying foundation of the Ikebana techniques stays constant, so much so that the basic techniques can be applied to other fields of art and design with the same balance and harmony. Auntie Loris, now it's all yours. <laughs> I think I, um, this is actually, uh, can we start from the basics? I have two basic arrangements, but this is the unconventional. If you want me to talk about that, fine. Uh, this is an unconventional uh, design, freestyle. Um, Last year, I was in England. I have to tell you about that. I was in England and visiting Henry in his barn. And then one morning, they said, well, the, the farrier is coming for the horses. I said, what is farrier? He says, well, the farrier is the beautician, let's say, for the horses. They had to change the manicure, not manicure, pedicure, the horses changing their their uh, their feet, let's say. And I didn't know every three weeks or every... Uh, four weeks they had to change it. Then in his package, they had I saw interesting nails. And I said, what's that? That intrigued me. These nails, horses' nails, intrigued me. And I, I said, can I take, can I, can I take a few? This one. He said, yes. So I took two or three, but of course, greedy as I am, and that's not enough to. I kept on taking more and more and more and hid it in my pocket. And one day I have to make a design out of that. So we did that. I took it. And later on, and I was thinking how to, how to arrange it to show it. Then I found the best way is to have the telephone knots. These are telephone knots for sure. And then nails, if you notice some nails down, these are nails that I foraged when we had a hurricane here about six years ago. It's absolutely they, stunning. They, they, did, they, did the, uh, they did the roofs and I said, okay, that's interesting. 
So at night I went and pinched a few, a few of them. So having the collection to design and that, uh, well, I had to do something with it. You just can't put the nails. Then to harmonize, I had to look around for uh, in art stores for something. And I did come find a, I did find a screens to go with it. The container in Ikebana is very important. Um, the container is a saddle, an old saddle, uh, probably from Mongolian times in Iran. So I, I brought it in the revolution. So I thought I could combine it together with some fresh material. So this is the unconventional. Amazing. But uh, to give color. And, and these are some plates that I got and I squeezed it. I think you're oh, just moving. Sorry. Wait, wait, you want to start? Yeah, yeah, back. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, think, yeah, I think you should show the basics, the two basics like. So do you see the nails? Yeah. So do that. And then the bottom is the roof nails. Oh my God. So, yeah. so I didn't I, notice them when I was putting together the PowerPoint. I can see them now. Well, you know, I worked very hard to combine them, how to stick them, how to make them. And so that's why. And I had to go here and there. The, the things were short. Then I had to look for longer ones, and I said, "Well, that works." So I you see, the when there's a will, there's a way. You put right. together <laughs> you have to natural, together. organic elements with minerals, metals, and they don't look harsh. They they harmonize. That's why I had to soften it with some leaves to put flower. It didn't work. Flowers would take away from the nails. So that's how it was, and I think. I hope you like it. Anyway, it, that is the story. Gorgeous. I heard afterwards, my daughter-in-law said, the farrier said, well, she took a lot, more than two and three. <laughs> These are costly. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> so that's why I wanted to share with you. Okay, so <clears throat> we go on and as we go along, this is my first certificate in Iran from uh, the uh, diplomats. Now, these are all from Japan and the latest that you get the certificates to get the higher degree. And each, each certificate we work with a teacher and the teacher gets it from Japan. It's all signed by the mother or by the headquarters. And unlike other student, other, other certificates, we, every time it costs more, it's more expensive each time we have to pay and we pay taxes, let's say every year and to give certificate to students too, it costs us, it costs the teacher and the student. So it's an expensive art, but interesting, if you want to have it. The tools we use in, uh, they're jumping, but it doesn't matter. As we go along, I did do it seriously, I couldn't edit. Uh, these are the tools used in Ikebana. That is in Japanese scissors, which is very good, lost a long time. And these are pin holders. The difference between Japanese ikebana and the, uh, the Western arrangement <clears throat> is that Western arrangement, they use oases and make a beautiful arrangement with colors, but the container is not important. In, in ikebana, the container is an integral part of the whole arrangement. Whatever we do, we have to show part of the container that shows a, uh, um, in harmony with the arrangement and the styles. Okay, style. next. Yeah. And for tall arrangements, you see, there was the picture with the flat, the two styles, Moribana, the basics. Things upright. I can't talk. Sorry. Sorry, somebody is yeah, unmuted I'm... and I cannot mute them. I'm not sure why. So if everybody can just check that they're muted. Okay. Uh, this is for tall vases, which, well, they're jumping. You can't see with what and what, but I'll go back as it goes. As it goes. No, 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 go back. Yeah. So at the beginning, then I could. Senya, go back. You're I going could... forward. Go back. Right. Go back. I want to show the two styles, the basic styles, upright and moribana. Okay. Anyway, for tall arrangements, we use long sticks, straight sticks. We make a split to have the branches coming in instead of the pin holders. 
pin holders are called frogs or pin holders. And the best if you can get is Japanese. That launched a lot. All right, go ahead. We're jumping. This was done at Thanksgiving arrangement with driftwood and grapes. Sorry, do you want a different one? This is the next slide. So we're you're doing fine. Just just OK, OK. If you show the, the two styles, are, well, OK. Sorry, I couldn't edit to see what goes after each other. Uh, anyway, this is uh, that was a um, Thanksgiving arrangement. It's the driftwood, which I found somewhere and packed in my, in my suitcase and brought it, which is a treasure, one of our, my treasures. And I combined it with grape leaves and grapes. And again, I tried flowers and flowers killed it. This is the head. All right. This is the headmistress, the director from Japan. And let me tell you about the history of Japan, of uh, Ikebana Sogetsu. It started, it goes from generation to generation. Her great grand, her grandfather was the original of Sogetsu. And then it passed from daughter to grandchild, grandchild now. And at present, she's the grandchild, she's the master. And I wow. took her when she was in a convention in Philadelphia together. That's amazing. Next. Her name is, uh, okay. This was using, see, using different. That's again freestyle, but again, uh, consists of basics. I have to use, um, these are metal and different containers, but combined with flowers. Okay, next. Okay, I'll tell you about that. Um, these flowers, if you noticed, these are fungi. So I look around wrongly. See, Ikebana is a legwork more. You work, you try to find unusual things, unusual stuff and sparks and interest for you. So that was in a, a demonstration uh, for dry material. So not using fresh. And I had these fun guys, some in from New York. I picked it up and my daughter said, what are you doing? Don't bring that in the house because it brings bugs. <laughs> I said, but I sneaked in anyway, and I brought them outside. So when I came back, I, I glued them with pins so they stand up. And these are different fungi, which I like. And that's a dry material. Don't you like it? It's gorgeous. I never, I kept wondering what it was. Now I know. So that was the uh, exhibition of the library here at uh, the back. On the right hand side is a Christmas uh, arrangement. On the left is a Hanukkah one. I had to show the two, the two oh. for the public. And that was my help. Ekebana, as I said, it's a big, it's a legwork and a lot of caring. And this is my Ekebana friend. And she always helps, always carries and helps me when I do demonstration. And that's why I didn't want to do demonstration here. This was, did an arrangement, um, a new art concept to represent art, to make an arrangement representing art. If you look at the art itself, it has a bird and dry branches and like a nest. So again, I had to look for material to represent it. And these are dry branches and you look at the nest and the actual bird to accompany it. And the only flower, I thought we combined with an orchid to look like wild orchid, not big flowers. And the container is a shell. Uh, Shell-like. It's a mm. ceramic. Shell-like to look like a nest. And that's just another one. That's a painting that uh, is from the Caspian Sea in, in, in Iran. I brought that and I had to combine it to see what container goes and what material goes how to combine and how to coordinate. And uh, if you see the birds flying in the sky and the shells and the thing, I had to find material to represent and dye color, colored branches just to make the clouds and the earth. And that I claimed a lot of interest. I love this one. That was the flower show again. Uh, in February 23rd, we had the 
were invited to do a kimana with artists to represent the art at our district. This is, uh, okay, I have to show you this material, but I'm so proud of it. If you will. This is a bark. These are fronds. The usual front from, from uh, palm trees. So I worked hard to make holes and to make it interesting, stick together and to make it interesting to use it anywhere with that. You know, I go around really my treasure. Sometimes I found rummaging with landscapers when they cut things. So I pick them up, of course I wash them and clean them and try to do something. So it's amazing. And you have it all the time. Okay, next. And I used it with this container with the spring alum. And on the left is dried, uh, Japanese dried weeds and dried. And in all of these arrangements, we can see the triad, the yes. three elements. Three elements, right? And which uh, represents Shin, Soi, Hikai, that is heaven, earth, man, all based on tradition, basic tradition. And then we create it. We create according to the vows. Oh, that was it. Oh, Sandra, you're showing a lot. <laughs> um, I put them all back in. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Don't tell Henry. OK, so make it fast. I, I want to make No, it. no, no, no. We have enough time. That was a temper, table, uh, a New York table center with dry material. You put them together across. And you see the container? Whatever you do, part of the container should show. That is part. That is always a part of a kibana, no matter how you fill it. Okay, next. Okay, I can tell you about this too. This container, I have hundreds, and I always collect, and I love containers. Sometimes it pops in it, an interest. Um, you see the um, orange trees. These are not orange. These are little kumquats. A friend of mine, she has. Um, she has them in a pot and I requested her, can I have some? So she brought it to a demonstration this last February. I used it and the flowers, you see, if you look down at the brow, uh, some of the leaves are imperfect, they are spoiled. This is what wabi-sabi, that you find uh, beauty in imperfection. Absolutely. Perfect. So this is, brings some fresh ones and some already used and dry and if you see how it goes but it has to match the container as well this um straw we had a, one of the ikibana meetings upstate um headmaster said well we make a basket and make ikibana arrangement so the baskets with all measures and whatever to do um, and i weird i weird i said i'll do my own so i did this and to turn like a basket I'll show you, if you want me to show you, like a basket. So I use this, which I, I can use in my bana instead of the basket. So that's how I arranged with that. Okay, next. I don't want to take too much time Alexander, for people, not to bore people. So there, in order to show, okay, that is another um, style, you see. We go from basics and then we go on into, there are five books actually that we go on and each one has a style. This style is using more than one container, conventional, unconventional material with fresh. So I use this for one of our exhibitions. Okay, you said. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's our last exhibition. The, the black branches are roots of bamboo. So when the bamboos are cut, and I notice the roots of them are quite interesting. Oh God. So I, uh, I, uh, I asked the guy to cut them and then I painted them and I put them together. And these are tools that we have. Okay, next, let us use a bit. Okay, I have to tell you about that. These are, when I was <clears throat> making a demonstration, I asked some friends who came and uh, 
they brought me this vase right in the middle of the in, uh, of demonstration, and I love this vase. So the branches are fig, fig trees from a fig tree. They are straight, and I found out stay, staying there with the fruit of it, it dries up well, and uh, they are pliable. I could bend them. And I did bend them, shape them, and I found out that they stayed and the fruit stayed as well. So um, I, I have, then I used it with uh, combining with the vase. You see the vase, it shows the container and what flowers to use to combine the colors. I used fresh and I had to, when we had our exhibition, I had the top ones are dry and some are fresh. Now there's only one place in, in uh, Naples an old building that has these figs, and I won't tell you. So I had to go and I have scissors in the car and ask permission if I can have a piece there. And they did. And I used fresh and uh, dry together with flowers to go. Okay, next. Oh, God. This is okay. Uh, okay, any questions? Okay, next. Uh, that material is called, mm, oh, it's a reed coming out of bamboo. There are small thin reeds that are colored and we use it as art and use it with dry material and fresh again. Okay, next. Any questions? Okay. That was done um, in, in my, in my teacher here in, uh, in uh, <laughs> Boca Raton, Del Rey, whom we take lessons from. And she had, the uh, she had the demonstration and I love this arrangement. And the ceramic is self-made and she had done it. So I like to show it. This is how it's uh, the dry material. Same here, sunflowers are my, one of my favorite. They just speak to you, they make you happy. And on the left is bananas, dry bananas. Okay, next. This is all white, and the container has something is splashy, and it's an ordinary glass vase, and you splash something white, which you get from Michael's, and the dry, white dry material. Okay, that was her exhibition. That's okay, and that's the basic. You see, you jumped around. That's on the left is the basic upright. She soy hikai heaven, earth, man. And you see the container, it shows the container and the water too. The second one is, is uh, the variation, number two. Again, shin, soy, there are measures that you get, uh, you know, you have to do it with measure and the flowers. You combine it with the tall. So the left side is the mechanics that I showed you, the pin holders or frogs or kenza. Japanese. The right side, you don't use pin holders, but you use the mechanics or the sticks, the sticks that were split at the beginning, if you remember. Okay, next. That's in the, the last exhibition at the, at the Botanical Garden. Sandra, you're showing off every. Now, this I have to tell you about. Um, this is an uh, art center. And the artist uh, invited me to make the arrangement according to her piece. So this piece, this comes from somewhere in Argentina. I looked at it and I came home and said, wow, I've got the right thing. I've got this piece of driftwood and then looked for, to represent the lilies and the oranges and the citrus to match the, uh, the painting. So I looked around and I came home and I found this piece of wood. I'd like to share it with you, if I may. Um, and then the orange of the as I said, this is a piece of a drift, not a drift, it's a root that lasts. It's natural color. It's all natural color. Now, how I got that, as I said, they were uh, the company, they were, um, uprooting, uh, uprooting some 
not trees, but bushes. And I looked at the, I, I looked at the, the roots and I said, that's interesting. Let me take one. I started peeling it, five peel, and the white came out. So I brought one home. I made them cut them. It's a big bush. And that's interesting. So I went, I went by car and I took six of them home. And I brought them home and people were asking, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to plant it? I said, no, I cut it. Then I started peeling. And you have to peel them when they're fresh, as they are fresh. So I asked my friends, Maurice uh, Torgerman and other friends that are here, I said, look, I'll invite you for lunch one day. And we stay, each one of you peel one of these roots. And uh, we have like a, like a gathering, like you have today. <laughs> so nobody came. And then I did one and I showed Maurice the next day. He said, this is only for people who have nothing to do. <laughs> and he said, well, how beautiful it is. But then every day, you know, it took me a whole week to take one at a time. So one night I stayed with that. I won't tell you how many hours it does take to peel. And I was in the kitchen. I started peeling and peeling and peeling. And the bedroom was open. I said, when am I going to go to bed? But I can't because it's all, you know, mold and stuff. So then suddenly I look outside and I see the sky is changing. It's, it's white. I say, what's happening in the sky? Look at the time. It was six o'clock, daybreak. So I stayed the whole night peeling that just to have it done. And I use it. Sometimes I get so involved and I don't feel the time pass by. It's, I told you, it's an art that makes you feel so comfortable. It's very relaxing. It's so much better than going to doctors and getting pills to relax. If you have any problems, it delve into Ikebana and you forget all about it. You create. Okay, so this is how it was done. Oh God, and that's at the exhibition artful. It was called the artful arrangement, and it was done at the at the art show. Sandra, you're showing too many pictures. This was another one. Another artist, she's abstract artist, and asked me to do according to that. So I come home and I found in my garage, in my treasures, I do have the right wood to represent the sky. If you look at the sky and uh, the sea and the water, and I thought that it, it needs water, it needs some flowers. What do I do? Sunflower, because it's, it, is sun, it is sunset and to represent sunset. This is fresh material. Wow. Wow. You have shown too much. No, 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 it's too much. Uh, that was our flower, annual flower show during COVID. Of course, it was closed, but we were asked, teachers were asked to do arrangements. And I, I, uh, I went rummaging for material. And what you see in the left and the right, I went to a field that grew um, tomatoes and some flowers. These were dry cabbage or ornamental cabbage. And I loved the stems. It was unusual. So of course I picked some and I brought home and I thought- You that used that buzz for the Thanksgiving uh, thing. Did I? Oh, yeah, it's the same thank one. You. <laughs> anyway, that's yeah. how I used it. And I, I didn't want to outdo the, uh, I wanted to show the uh, ornamental cabbage, the colors. So I had to use very, uh, um, you know, how do they say, not showy flowers, because then it takes away something to complement it still. And that's uh, a dry, um, a dry tree to the weeds from Japan. I, I, this is how I combined it together. Okay. And uh, this is an arranged black and white. And that material is um, called, it is, it is bamboo, strip bamboo and, and colored. And these are uh, the black and white or dry palms, palm leaves treated, Japanese from Japan. And I use, well, for some color, I used uh, some butterflies. And butterflies are, again, my very favorite. I have a lot of favorites. This is one of it. So I brought down to just enhance it, just to enhance. Oh, this is a, a treasure, another treasure. Uh, Henry went to Ethiopia on a horse. 
was asked for work and then he brought me back, Henry, my son. He brought me back this container. He said when they went on the horse and they had a cook with them, three horses to cook with them, to go and cook every day the food and they kept the food uh, warm, the rice warm in that container. So I liked that. And then I thought I'll make an arrangement out of that. And that's a dry piece of wood and some, again, not important flowers, which I picked from the trees to match the, uh, to match the, uh, oh, the uh, shells. Okay, next. Okay. This should have been actually in the beginning because this is a basic arrangement on tall bases called uh, uh, Nagari. And You're getting a lot of comments. They're saying amazing. Henry is telling me you put too much in, but I don't think so, ladies. Yeah, I know. Do you agree with me? He said, you have to interest people. They're not interested in that. Look, we have until uh, 1130. Anyway, so this is the basic arrangement. Actually, basic Nagari taught. We have two styles. Basic Moribana is flat. You use flat dishes with those pins and it goes on into different oh okay so that is nagari using on tall bases using the sticks the two sticks that are shown in the beginning now i have to talk about the branches uh i said i drive some huh, someone is saying not too much really beautiful thank you yes okay. so these branches i was taking i was driving and then uh, and then suddenly at the distance I see this interesting tree with these uh, uh, shining, I don't know what it was, purplish. Then I went there, it was by a car wash. And I said, stop by the car wash. The car wash was just telling, do you want a car wash? I said, no, not yet, but do you mind if I cut some branches from <laughs> that tree? And you know what that is? It's a cotton. It's a cotton, just cotton. Oh, yeah. Just cotton. And of course, I went to the car, got my sharp scissors and cut a few and lo and I mean it was just a small tree lo and behold when I bring it down and I'm in the house full of bugs red bugs running around <laughs> bugs and I was thinking so anyway I cleaned it up and washed it and so forth but I enjoyed it and then I combined it because I wanted to show the branch of the shin and the soy shin is on the left and soy is on the right and you get the flowers. Oh. And again, I reuse those, uh, uh, reuse the uh, uh, ornamental cabbage with no other flowers, just to bring out the branches, the beauty of cotton. And the vase is uh, it's just an ordinary vase, and I put cardboard around it and painted it, and it looked interesting. Wow. Um, into it that made it interesting. So we have to look for more interest. You see the pin holders and showing water. Um, there are studies, there are five books, uh, five books that you go in steps. First is the two styles. And from the two styles, there are different variations. You, you'll get bored to do the same thing all the time. So uh, each, each, uh, each lesson, each variation is a lesson. And when you complete it, Book one, you get one certificate, and book two is different, you get another. And then four, five, until you get into the fifth, then you get first teachers, and teachers goes on, on and on and on. Amen. Anyway, next. Okay, that is a basic. Those two had to be shown. You see the basic, I use the pin holder, and then there's the water that reflects the sky. Shin, heaven. Uh, uh, Earth and man. Man is looking at Earth. So elegant. Thank you. Okay. Quick. Ah, oh, this is my. Okay. This is, well, these are the details of the driftwood and the details of which flowers to combine with the with the artwork. So, which lilies, and that's why. And these are little uh, citrus fruits that the that the painting had. Now, where do I get citrus fruit? I'm not good in, te in te technical things, but I am good in, uh, I have a mind where everything is. I have, for instance, somewhere where is the dumps, there is a tree with citrus fruit. I know where it is. I know where 
those it's leaves out. I have, friends, I have friends who have different things. And I said, may I have, whenever I have conversion, I need to have, and then I have to go. So driving, driving to, to get one arrangement, it takes a long time to find things to put. And the citrus fruit, I know a friend of mine lived in a, in a somewhere which had a citrus fruit, and I know the code to go in. I had to go at night with the scissors and <laughs> to find them and, and pick them to make the arrangement. And the little red ones are the natural. Okay, next. next. Uh, this is uh, when we had a, a store at the table, when outside our building, our compound, they cut down trees to make room for parking. So I found roots, of course. I went rummaging to look at the roots and I found some roots. So I found this root was interesting, three parks. I had it cut, cut them landscapers and shaped this, this is a root, shaped it and made a hole inside to make it a container. This is a root to make a container and use it in different ways. Auntie, you teach a cabana also. Yeah, of course I teach. I have those degrees out for teaching. Okay, and that's it next. So it looks like we reached the end. <laughs> so we can, uh, so I picked the pussy that goes something. We had a record turnout, Auntie, and nobody thinks it's uh, too much. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It tells me, don't make it too much. Don't make it too boring. <laughs> what boring? <laughs> Okay, well, let's it. open it up to it questions. My, it is my passion. I just love it. I roam around and find material, find people who has any interesting than I, <laughs> I need. All right, any questions? Question. Yes. Hi. Hi. I would like to ask a question. Uh, my name is Andre Haim. I was very, very, I loved your the program. I loved the, but I realized that there's very few flowers and a lot of branches and ribbons. So where do you get all these things yeah. that you, the, that you use? Well, that, that's a good question. Yes, a kibana is very few flowers, but we have to look and search what goes with the theme and what goes with our container and the occasion. In fact, I was invited to do a, a party, henna party, and then the, the hostess, uh, she said, well, I'd use, you, I, know, I, can, uh, I don't want too much flowers. You'll use very little flowers. Can you make arrangements? I said, okay. So, but I have to do it on the spot. You cannot make arrangements and bring it because everything is me methodical and to the measure and to the container, with the container. And if you change it when it's when traveling, if something changes, moves the, the angle, then you lose the purpose. So I went with bragging a lot of material to do it. I said, oh my God, so much material for little arrangement. I said, yeah, that's it. <laughs> So where, where did you get this material? Oh, material, we do not have a whole, wholesaler here. So I roam around in different things for flowers, of course. And sometimes wildflowers, something you get. But the branches, again, I said that Ikebana is leg work. So you travel by car, walking, and something interests you. You find a branch, you find a stone, you find somewhere like the cotton tree, cotton tree, and say, ah, oh, that's interesting for my witch style to do. And I have a lot of dry, and when it's something dry and curved, so I have it in the garage, saving <coughs> it on a different occasion. The branches are important. In uh, Ikebana basics, uh, we use branches for the main lines and the flowers for the, uh, for the earth. So that's why it combines. We have to Thank you. And why do you have to peel those branches? You said it took you hours and hours. They're very beautiful without peeling them. No, because no? without peeling, then it's this, it's dry and ugly. And then it has to stay when it is fresh. When it is not fresh, then it becomes brown and it's not interesting. But this particular uh -huh. branch, not every yeah, root is good, uh, not, not but this particular 
one, I found out that it's white, <laughs> natural <laughs> white. It's not painted. It's not boring. It's, 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 it's just natural. The way it is, and it's used in different ways. I use it in so many different ways. It's six years old, actually. It's beautiful. Yes. But how do you get it so white? Natural. That's why it took me so many hours to peel it before it gets it gets uh, it gets old. And when it gets it's fresh, when it was cut fresh and thrown away, I saw these bushes and I had them cut. Of course, I trimmed a lot and shaped a lot. You know, it's not all uh, natural. So maybe Did you do it with a knife. Did you peel it with a knife. Knife with a knife. I have a special knife that end of it is cut and I use it with knife and then I went to Michael's and bought uh, uh, tools to clean some areas where I had to taken off and uh, it stays but when you have that it stays for life and it's mm. natural that's the beauty of it it's just fresh freshly done but natural and not every not every brand is there like that but do you need to these are willows. Oh. When I get willows, you buy the willows. I twisted them the shape I like, and then they dry, and you paint them. So are you paint them with a brush or with a spray? Paint. With a spray paint. Um, a spray. Okay, okay. I have I have a problem because I'm highly allergic to paint. So mm. I have to hire somebody or good friend to spray it out outside. Different mm. colors to go. Thank I have a you. question. Yeah, we have some questions. I I also see Gigi has a question. I have a question. Yes, I have a question. Um, if I may ask, guys, if if you know how to raise your hands, then I can get to people in the right order uh, in Zoom. If not, Gigi, it's okay. Gigi knows how to raise her hand. She was a teacher. <laughs> when, wonderful. So okay. I have uh, I have. So let's do Gigi first, then Suzanne. Raise your hand. Uh, Great. Okay, Susan. thank you, um, Loris. I have already met your son through Zoom, and uh, obviously there's a creative uh, gene that runs in the family, and you're giving everybody a lot of pleasure, at least I feel it. Um, I do have a question for you, and that is you mentioned that the, um, in Ikebana you must have three levels, each level uh, symbolizes something else the heavens the moon uh the earth do you need to have three different elements you did mention that the that branches are important but are they necessary do you need three separate elements flowers for example something dry something wet and perhaps branches i don't know but i'm asking you do you need three yes well that is the style. Even rocks. And even rocks, yes. Um, in in um, um, basic style, that we have shin soy. They're called shin soy, and they're different measures. You measure, you, know, uh, you measure your branches. Uh, they sound like arithmetic. This is all a philosophy and, and a technique. You measure uh, one and a half times um, plus the depth of a container no matter what container you have. And the secondary soy, two thirds of the first. And the hikai, half of the first or two thirds of the second. These are the measures. Yes, it has to have a different, very good question. Um, measure to make an asymmetrical triangle to show and bring it. And then once you place these in places with the angles and the shapes, then you know you are, let me show you, if you want me to show you where the paper is and <clears throat> where it should be done. I mean, I look for it. But there are different books. Then, <clears throat> and then you place it. You look at it, then you fill up. Yes, but the first two in the basics arrangement should be the same material. Branches, of course, because it's more natural. You can do flowers, you can do leaves, but they have to be the same. The two first have to be the same material, but the flowers different. And that also has an angle. Um, this is a book one, if you can see that. 
This is how it's placed. Yeah, we can see. Do you see that? Yeah. We also, Gigi, does that answer your question? Uh, and the placement, if you see this one, the placement, and they have different signs. Shin is round, soy is square, and hikai is a triangle. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. We got a question from Suzanne Goyle. Here. Here. Hold on. Do you see that? This is from the textbook. Um, actually, my question is, hello, thank you for amazing. It was excellent, your presentation, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you to Gladys and also Sandra for organizing this. I wanted to know, when you're working on a wood, do you make it wet that be easily removing or you work on it dry? Well, those particular ones were fresh still. And then towards the end, for one week I had it, it got so uh, wet. Some, some woods you do, but then when you peel, you have to see not every wood or branch renders beauty. So when you cut it, you peel it with a knife or whatever, uh, then uh, you see for yourself. If it is brown, stays brown. And if it is this, it depends on the substance of the material. And yes, of course, if you find a drip, you can make your own drip. <coughs> A root, if you find a root out and it's interesting, yes, you do wet it for days and days and days until it gets soggy. Then you start peeling and you see. Then you start peeling, you see if it is brown, let it stay brown. Like the one night that I had uh, with a tripod, like a tripod, that was dry. That was dry, so I had to wet it a little bit to clean it up. That was we a big, huge one, you know? And then we also I see where it's interesting. We have some questions in the chat. Katya, I see you, and I think that you're the one with the questions in the chat. So I'm just gonna ask you to unmute and you can ask them yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Auntie Larisse. It's uh, wonderful to have this presentation. I've seen your your work firsthand, so I know it's amazing. Um, so I, there are two questions. Somebody sent one to me, which I thought was good. They sent it to me by mistake. What's the lifespan of the arrangements when you use flowers, uh, fresh or dry? Are they permanent or do the flowers need water? Perfect. That's a very good question. You see, now I was asked to show pictures only about Ikebana, not a class, but I will tell you, yes, when it's an advice. Um, always flower, always water. Plants need water. And that's why I have some branches for different things. Even branches, you cut at a, um, show you the scissors. And these are good Japanese shears. Uh, you cut underwater at a cross and you put in, in warm water, never ice. The ice freezes. Uh, what, when you buy flowers, when you come home, again, no matter from where or if you cut, cut at a slant, underwater, you make a, a jug or a, or, a, or a container of water and you cut underwater so your flowers will last, last longer. And if you buy some roses or, or like tulips that wilt, they have a tendency to wilt. So again, you cut under warm, warm water and if they are wilted, roses are wilted, and you know they are fresh, freshly bought, and what you do, cut under the water and put it in boiling. Cover the roses, but the stems should be in boil, boiled water for some time. So that sort of uh, perks, perks the life stem of the flower. Oh. Or if the, stems, if the stems are hard, you crush them and put pepper or salt, so they have a tendency to be thirsty, to drink, because plants need you, the beauties. You cut them out, but you, but you cut them. <laughs> okay. So you, you cut them under water to give it life. The lifespan is water. And uh, um, that's how you crush like lilacs, they wilt, roses, they wilt. 
You cut them, you crush them with the pepper, vinegar, cinnamon, any spice, then put them in, from hot to cold. And like for instance, um, hydrangeas, you buy them fresh. When you come home after the day, they're just tired and they droop. You cut on the warm water, put them in hot water, you see how it works. And it's a miracle. You see how it opens up, <laughs> you know, that's another miracle. Okay, does that satisfy your question? Thank you. Katya, I think you had another question earlier. Yes. Um, what do you do with the materials once you finish exhibiting a piece? Well, if the flowers are it's good, you bring a bucket with you and you immediately put it in the, in the bucket to bring it home. And then materials, that's why I have a lot of dry materials too, and painted materials. But, but for the basics, it's always fresh. So you bring it back or you give it. <laughs> or sometimes, or sometimes they like to, uh, to sell it to make money for their club, whatever. Auntie, right. you also used to make um, artificial flowers with yes. fabric. Yes. I did Tell that. us. Uh, artificial flowers. When uh, in Iran, when we had uh, we had the uh, when we had the uh, you know it was banned. The Ekibana chapter was closed. See, I started studying in in Iran. So when the chapter was closed, banned uh, after the revolution. We had a friend, and she had in the basement, and the teachers said, you know what? Let's do flower, flower arrangement with silk. There's not with silk, it's fabric. So we used to go to make fresh flowers, to make uh, artificial flowers. So that was another tent. We used to go and buy with a friend, fresh orchid, and try to represent it. Yes, when I went to Japan for it too, actually, I studied that. And tell us about the maiden voyage of the Queen Mary um, cruise ship that you had a workshop that yeah. you were teaching. Yes, I had a, uh, I had a workshop Queen Mary too with Henry. And Henry was invited to do the slideshow and I was invited to do Ikebana, so we went together. And then I had to carry things from here fresh. I said, I need fresh flowers on the ship. They did provide some, and I took from here. And of course, a lot of dry materials and pinholes. People were very interested. And let's come over to the west. So these are the pinholes, different types. And it was nice twice. We did that twice. And with questions, and I had to carry an overweight uh, bags to carry uh, vases and some ikebana, some plastic things, some ceramics that would not break. And uh, on the ship, they had a flower supply too. They helped me. And it was nice. <laughs> and one time, one of the roots, you tell me, talking about the roots, I have to tell you that. So I went, you know, I'm, I'm a nature person. I love outdoor. So I used to go with Henry when he lived in Denver camping, he would climb, he would climb the trees and he would climb and I would roam, I would enjoy it. He would do the climbing, rock climbing, and I would roam around what I found. So I found beautiful roots. I used to bring it and then on, on the, in his car and uh, in his compound. So I went to the laundry room, I started peeling and cleaning. First of all, I spoiled his car, the roof of it, it dented and his compound, compound they, uh, uh, they grumbled because it, it clogged the drainage. They said, oh, when they saw me the next day when I was cleaning, oh, they said, it is you who's bringing these stuff there. <laughs> and that cost Henry a lot of money. So that's how it was. And I had to carry it all the way back home. Do we have any more questions? Somebody needs to raise their, you can speak or you can raise your hand. I don't see uh, we, uh, so, Yes. Um, thank you very much for your lovely presentation. I was wondering, how do you uh, keep the stems? Like what, what is the basis of your planting? Is it in dirt or in the sponges or? Well, that's a very good question. That's why in the beginning I had to say that. I couldn't edit to explain. No, 
the difference between uh, a, a Japanese plough arrangement, there are different schools as well, and the Western arrangement, we don't use at all sponges. The oasis is a no-no. We do not use oasis at all. We use pin holders, as I showed you. Okay, different style, uh -huh. different sizes, only with these. So the branches stick to these. Branches and flowers stick to these. Different sizes, large, small, whatever. And they're deep. Yes, they're mm -hmm. deep and the, the, the container, flat containers, have to have more than four inches, three or four inches to keep water. And mm -hmm. when you make an arrangement, always make sure every day to fill up fresh water and nothing nice. should be in the water, like a branch or a stem or a flower, because then makes the flower, makes the water stagnant. And that shouldn't be, it should be fresh and added every day fresh water. And if it is more than a week or a, more than five days or so, the water tends to get stagnant. You yes. pump it out and you fill up with fresh. Wow. And that's how you keep your arrangement more than a week or more than, more than whatever. You like. Do you spray? Do you spray the flowers uh, like with a spray bottle? Of, yes, 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 yes. So that they stay, okay. remain moist at the outside? Always, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yes. You do that, you cut under the water, that's the first thing. Uh -huh. Never uh, use ice. Hot water and cold water, just to give them a spark. And um, uh, when you finish the arrangement, yes, always uh, spray with, with water. Yes, I keep it maybe more than one a day and more than once or twice a day. And make sure it is not under a fan. I see. <laughs> And the fan dries it up. Yes. Dries it up. And you, you never use dirt in your containers. No, There's no, no, no dirt. No, it's not planting. No, it's oh. not planting. It is arranging. And, and there's uh, water. They don't grow roots. Your cuttings don't grow roots. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. I have some cuttings. If they grow roots and I like them, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I put them in dirt. Sometimes, Thank you. It was lovely. Sometimes you find nice materials like willow. The willows grow roots and the willows are uh, pliable because you have to bend them. And uh, to bend them the shape you like, you know, you pick something, it is straight, but you, you like to uh, look at you, you talk to it. The, the branch of the material talks to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, then you want it not stay a different shape so with your hands and the warmth of your body and and the love that you give talk to it and it will uh, it will accept um auntie just do you use fruits yeah. do you also use vegetables absolutely okay. sorry maybe i had another one more, more than that vegetables of course the weird shapes of vegetables anything that in, inspires you whatever yeah, i have an arrangement with eggplants actually Oh, how beautiful. And, and dry. Did you use orchids? Did, have you had any orchids in your, in your, any of your pictures that you showed us today? I don't think so. Or you don't use orchids? Yes, I did. Or I one. Did I have did. orchids. Yes, there was orchids. But yeah, I, I do. So. I use a lot of orchids. Uh, orchids and, uh, and roots go very well together. Mm -hmm. Because they, they last long. Yes, they do. well, not necessarily. When you cut orchid, there are orchids in the house last long. Actually, I had one given in, in August for me, and I went away a few months, came back, and it was blooming still. It lasted the whole year. And uh, when it lost on a, in a bush, in a, in a container. And again, orchids, when they tell you, um, Another hint for orchids, when they tell you uh, to use um, an ice piece, yes. you know, it's just a measure of watering. Don't ice. use ice. Orchids do not like ice. Mm. They are tropical. They like warm. In fact, warm water. Once a week, you use a little bit of water. You have to have your fingers that is moist. Don't use ice at all. Use warm water, but little. Do not over... Uh, over your 
overwater your orchids because they die. They are aphids actually. They grow on the tree and they are in the tropics. They just grow naturally. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have answered a lot of questions. You know a lot about plants as well, not just uh, arrangements. Yes, that's, that's what took me. I was a child, always I roamed around and looking for material, not knowing what I'm doing, always interests me. Plants, their weird shapes, anything interested me. So that's why they call oh. me, they come to do Ikebana. You like that and, and do it oh. professionally. So I did that as a hobby, then it turned out to be professional. And got, and I well, thank you for all the information today. That was lovely. Thank you for sharing. And I hope you will look and, and learn. And you do, Montreal has a chapter. You look for Ikebana chapter, join them, and enjoy the art, the world of Ikebana. It's very relaxing. I'm telling you, you would love it. And uh, you take lessons with their teachers. They're all with different teachers. Why, why don't you come to Montreal one day and you show it, to show, show okay. everything to I us I could in person, that. in person. I could, I could do that. And here are the books that you learn and each book can be given. And I teach my, if you want lessons. I have come to Montreal, staying with Michelle Charabani, actually. And, and the gifts that they give me, they know that I love Ramani, her, her late husband, always, and Michelle, the people of the Botanical Garden. Once they brought me a beautiful driftwood, a branch that looked like antlers. And they said, give them, they know. Anybody who gives me a gift, brings me driftwood or vases, they know I keep it. <laughs> I don't displace. And Gladys, now you have an idea here. You can do a, a women's learning group sponsored workshop. You need to fundraise to bring Loris here. Okay. Pleasure. Yeah, we would love to have you, Loris. Okay. And then uh, I can show you, and you can show you the containers. I have over 50, 100 containers, always looking for more. Wow. Yeah. And I'm still learning. Auntie, why do they say you can also put dish soap in a jar of flowers? Dish soap? Soap dish, you mean? Uh, no, soap. So Yes, um, sometimes, yes, um, um, uh, to keep it clean. Yeah, oh, yes, it's yeah. mold. Definitely, mold. When, when mold you make an arrangement, if you have the flower for a long time, yes, especially in the tall ones, then uh, water gets spoiled. Uh, it does accumulate mold, it does accumulate, you know, the freshness goes. And that is the secret of an arrangement, that the arrangement should be clean. That's why when we have our exhibitions, it's just two days or three days, you know, they, and then we check on it, check the water, check mm -hmm. the way that is clean. Fresh water should be nice and uh, streaming water. And that is, that's the beauty of it. The water, the container, the arrangement, the shape is all in one. Did you do some arrangements for weddings? Yes. And fresh, and uh, I did more with the artificial flowers. <laughs> yes. I do. I'm open. If you invite me for weddings and for uh, anything, I'm open to anything. <laughs> yes. Yes. They do. they do invite me to give a demonstration workshop. I don't know about now. <laughs> Still. How do you spill out the stagnant water after a few days when your arrangement is in there? Like, how, how do you pull it out of the vase and spill out the water? No, bear with me. Sorry, we have somebody. Hold on, I'm muting everybody because we can't hear. But I don't know who's background. Okay, good. Hi, Stella. Hi, Vivi. I think we're waiting for Loris to come back. Hi, Sandra. That was the most beautiful lesson we've had so far. Here, you drain the water. You drain your water with this. Oh, okay. Like a yes, you drain a your water. Baster, baster, like a turkey baster. baster. Yes, and you clean it and you add fresh water because you work hard on your arrangement. When you make yes. the arrangement, 
put them in place, the flowers. You take the, the old flowers away, you put fresh ones, you refresh, again, cut underwater. Every time you get a flower out of the water, make sure to cut it at a slant. Yes. The, reason, the reason for a uh, slant cutting is uh, not to have, and in water, not to give a chance to breathe air. Yeah, and it's more more uh, exposed, like more part of the stem that's exposed when it's on the diagonal. Diagonal, that's right, anything diagonal. You see, you cut a branch outside, it's beautiful on a tree. A branch is beautiful on a tree, but when you bring it in, you yes. will see that it doesn't render the same beauty. So you have to cut the extra leaves or where you trim it or you bend it, you've got to bend it, you know, bend it softly and nicely to the shape you like because it's not interesting just straight 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 it has to have variations and let me tell you about this bending part actually if i may now uh, i was in cape town in johannesburg for an uh, for a convention we had a convention there and then we well, had some friends in london on a business trip and they said whenever you come to africa johannesburg call us we'll take you around so once I was in the hotel and there we had the exhibition. So I called this friend and said, come, come and see the Ikebana exhibition. And we're there, five days exhibition. And she said, I'm not interested in Ikebana because she said once she saw it on uh, screen, a gentleman was uh, bending a branch and it took a whole 20 to half, more than half an hour how to bend it. So for her, it wasn't interesting. <laughs> She thought, all oh, I can one is that. <laughs> yes, it's the bending, the bending part and the technique. And I say, you have to give it love. When you pick something, it interests you, it speaks to you, but you also have to give it back. Show the best. Do you have any more questions? Then I'm going to oh. Do you have any live plants at home inside your house that you uh, kind of propagate and work with or? Uh... I do. I have actually, Neil and I have things. I plant things like, uh, like um, outside. Well, I live in a condo. We are not allowed to have uh, any fruit trees or anything, but I have no flowers really because I travel a lot and uh, maintenance, but uh, leaves like aspidistra leaves. I love them. <laughs> green aspidistra leaves. The hibiscus, that, hibiscus, yes. Hibiscus, well, I pick. And then uh, the leaves I have in the pots outside. So when I need some leaves to see, but I know, find out where there's a field of it. When I need a lot of it, there's a field of it, but I can not see. And I always have a bucket and a big bottle of water in the car. And of course, shit, scissors and knives and uh, and ready to pick. Whenever I see something, I pass by. I like that. I park the car. I ask permission. Sometimes I ask permission. And they said, yes, you can. I said, well, I don't need now, but I need certain time. Can I come? So I have permission there. But when I see something in, uh, in parking lots, especially in parking lots, and especially in buildings, new buildings, I look around, I rummage, and see what there is. So I pick them, cut the, bring the bucket, the bucket, and put it in water until I go home. So, yeah. Thank so, you. I think I have at home. Yes. Thank you. Gladys, I'm going to pass it to you. Thank you very much. I think we can finalize now. You, you gave us such a beautiful presentation. Everybody enjoyed it. Good for the eyes, good for the spirit, and good for the mind, and good for right. everything. It's good Thank you so much. It's good to start the day with such a beautiful thing. And you are so pleasant. It's so, it's, we are so happy to meet you. And as Andre said, we would be happy to see you in person also. Welcome to our show. It's a great presentation for everybody. Thank you very much, Auntie Loris. Thank you, Sandra, for insisting to invite Auntie Loris. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Sandra, Thank you. Did, Sandra also did a great job. She put everything on the 
website on PowerPoint. The way we saw you saw it, that was Sandra who worked so hard on it. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, thank you, Xenia. Thank you, everybody. Recording stopped. Sorry, yes, you take the responsibility.